Hello, welcome to the Monday, February 3rd, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. First of all, thanks to everybody who submitted corrections uh, during January when I was offering a free Raspberry Pi to anybody doing so. Well, uh, I raffled now off uh, this Raspberry Pi. Just send out the email to the lucky winner before starting to record this podcast. Now, for February, I'm trying a little bit something different, and I'm again giving away a Raspberry Pi, but this time it's uh, not for sending in errors or things like this. I just want a very brief email or a note via our contact form why you think uh, you could help us really improve our honeypot if you own one of these Raspberry Pis. So what I'm looking for is any kind of Python programming background maybe, or maybe you have an interesting network uh, to connect to, or you're just really good in sort of writing GitHub bug reports. So let me know. I'm not looking for essays here. Please keep it very brief, sort of two, maybe three sentences is really all I'm looking for. In diaries this weekend, we again had a gem by Didier. You may have heard, and I think I mentioned it in the podcast too, a few months ago, sort of late last year, there was some interesting crypto coin miner malware. And the way it downloaded the actual malware was by hiding it inside a WAV file. This will sometimes uh, make it past uh, things like network intrusion detection systems or other sort of network-based controls. And then on the receiving end, of course, once the WAV file is received by the initial downloader, the executable is extracted and then run. Now, DDA, of course, had a Python script that almost uh, did everything he needed it to do in order to extract the malware from the audio file. He now adjusted this uh, Python script and made it public as usual. So if you run into malware like this, well, it will help you hopefully extract the file from the audio file. And scams and phishing emails and such related to the coronavirus are starting to trickle in. Not a lot really at this point, but uh, No Before, for example, is reporting that they have seen a couple of phishing emails that took advantage of this particular disease. Probably the most sort of uh, blatant, brazen kind of exploit uh, is reported by Brian Krebs. He actually spotted a website that offers a vaccine for sale. Of course, that doesn't exist yet. It's also a little bit suspicious if you're buying your vaccines, not in the pharmacy, but from a random Russian website and you're paying in Bitcoin. Uh, They're asking for 0.1 Bitcoin for sort of the version one of the vaccine. That's about a thousand dollars and goes all the way up uh, to a quarter Bitcoin. Luckily at this point, uh, it looks like the Bitcoin address that's being used uh, on the website has not received any payments yet. And a little update to the Google Chrome 80 issue with same side cookies. Well, it uh, turns out that uh, Google apparently has been listening to its customers and uh, is delaying the introduction a little bit. It will still be in Google Chrome 80 but it will not be turned on when Google Chrome 80 will originally be released. Instead, they'll wait, and I believe it's about a week, and then they'll only enable it on 1% of Google Chrome installs worldwide and sort of slowly trickle out that feature. So it gives you a little bit more time to really play and experiment with this to see if it affects any of your websites. That trickling a sort of rollout, of course, could have its problems itself by sort of giving you an inconsistent experience, depending on whether you're using a version of Google Chrome that already has the feature enabled or one that doesn't have it enabled. 
Yeah, and sadly, I couldn't really find sort of a public uh, blog post, anything like this about uh, this delay. Uh, this really comes from people who have talked uh, to Google about uh, this particular feature and essentially complained about how it uh, may break their enterprise systems. And Google has released as open source the software and the operating system inside its security keys, calling it OpenSK for Open Security Key, uh, written in Rust, and it implements the full FIDO and U2F and FIDO2 protocols. Not certainly possible for someone to essentially now create their own security key from scratch, but that's not really the intention here. The intention is by open sourcing the software that they can have other people look at the source code, look for vulnerabilities. And of course, that hopefully will also sort of get people to trust into Google's implementation if the source code is publicly available. And well, this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.